Let's try that again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you should be able to hear me now. Uh, running a little bit behind, a few minutes behind, but uh, we made it. We made it. Uh, how is everybody doing tonight? I hope you're doing well. Um, I've got, uh, let me go over a couple of things with you all. Uh, just kind of a little bit of, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of catch up from uh, the past class and everything and other classes and stuff. So uh, the last time we were together, we were making a, we were making a uh, workbench for a hydraulic lift table that I purchased and everything. Uh, there's going to be a part two to that. So everything we did still, uh, still matters and all that stuff, but um, I haven't gotten the material yet. I had something else happen in the meantime. In the meantime, uh, I was supposed to go to the Tampa woodworking show, but the shows got canceled. So um, the last three woodworking shows got canceled. So that kind of threw a wrench in some plans. And uh, I ended up uh, um, uh, acquiring a four by four digital wood carver, four by four CNC machine, our 4848 model CNC machine, um, purchasing it from one of our customers in Tampa, Florida. So Friday I go pick that up. Uh, and so that I've been kind of working on the shop, getting things moved around and stuff for this larger machine to kind of fit. So I haven't gotten a chance to get to the build of that table, right? That lift table. Um, we're going to actually, we're going to, we're going to get into the build of the lift table. That's going to kind of be kind of a part two. Um, and the, um, we're, uh, we're just not there yet. So in the meantime, I have a project that I want to redesign, kind of improve upon, uh, and everything. And let me, <coughs> you're going to have to forgive me. I've got this nasty cough, but let me see if I can, uh, switch over to my, give me just a second here, ladies and gents. Almost there. Stand by one moment. Dun, dun, dun. On channel two, let me drop myself down out of the way. All right. So I've got this podium that I am using as a computer stand. And I really like it as a computer stand. It's lacking a few things. Uh, a good amount of storage and, 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 and stuff like that. But I like it. It's adjustable. If I want to sit down, I can just bring everything down. If I want to stand up, I can adjust it up to a perfect height where I'm not bending over, saving my back. And um, it's super simple in design. Uh, and uh, it works great as a podium too. I mean, that's kind of what it was designed for. And the thing about the... Uh, podium is the material is MDF and it has uh, this paper kind of coating on it. It's real cheaply made. I want to say like Ikea made, right? Kind of deal. And what I'd like to do, <coughs> excuse me, what I'd like to do is I'd like to make it out of hardwood, some beautiful hardwood. I haven't decided yet like walnut or, you know, or, or something, but uh, I want to redesign this. And if I'm going to redesign this, because you can see the papers just peeling off the MDF and everything. If I redesign this, I want to add some appropriate storage. Now, what you're seeing in the photo here, there's kind of like a little door that opens, you know, for like a little cubby hole. And then there's this big open space 
down here, right? Well, I'd like to redesign this. Exclude, get rid of the cubby hole. That thing's got to go. And I would like a series of drawers here um, that are different heights and thicknesses and all that can hold some router bits and stuff and manuals and things like that. But I'd like to design some drawers that have this nice flow with them as well as far as the drawer fronts. I'd like to design some drawers and put them in. But everything else as far as the design, whoop, that's not part of the design. Everything else is part of the, as, as the design. I'm going to be keeping, um, but I'm going to add some additional features. Okay, so that is, uh, I want to take this. I love this design and simplicity. I got a small shop, don't have a whole lot of room, right? It holds my, um, it holds my laptop just fine. I can extend it. Like I said, I can stand up straight. doesn't hurt my back or anything like that. Um, and, uh, I like it. It's on wheels. It rolls around, right? I can roll it around and all that stuff, but it could be better. I'd like to, in the top here, I'd like to make a couple of little pockets because uh, things tend to slide off, right? You know, I'd like to make a couple of little recesses uh, that maybe my, um, uh, you know, pencils, tape measure, or, um, uh like a bit that I have on standby or something, which I have drawers, right, for that. So I could leave the bits in the drawers. But I would just like to have a few little pockets on this and uh, and all. So that's kind of what we're going to do. We're going to redesign this. We're going to revamp this. And um, uh, we're going to keep the simplicity of it but we're going to improve upon it and we're going to make it out of hardwood. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Now this little bracket right here, this is a swivel bracket. So the lid or not the lid, but the top, you know, tilts, you know, like if I was reading a book or doing a presentation or something that's made to tilt. Now I only have it in one position when I have my computer on it. Right. Uh, and everything, but I'm still going to create this design, but I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to make it out of wood. We're going to carve out the parts and everything uh, to make this and everything um, out of wood. Or I might use this bracket again. I might re-salvage this bracket. I don't know yet, but we'll go both ways. All right. So where we're going to start off at is in SketchUp, ladies and gentlemen. I know this is a veteran tutorial, not a SketchUp tutorial, but... I need to be able to visualize the parts and everything, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll bring it into <coughs> we'll bring it into Vetric and fine tune everything. Okay. So first off, um, I'm going to start off with creating kind of the midsection and then I'll create the tops and the bottom. The top and the bottom is exactly the same. Uh, so let's start off here. I'm going to kind of tilt this around and um, we're going to go with a rectangle that is um, 21 inches by um 12 and three quarters. So I'm going to go 12.75 uh, comma 21. Oh, <laughs> if y'all got that in the chat, that was, I typed on the wrong computer. 12.75 uh, comma 21. Okay. And let's get into this space here. I'm going to push pull this. So hit the letter P for push pull tool and I can pull this up and it's going to be three quarters of an inch. So 0.75 and enter. Okay. 
Now I'm not going to make this a component just yet. I want to make the uh, changes that I need and everything. <coughs> I'm going to use the tape measure tool and I'm going to measure up from the bottom four inches. And I'm going to measure over from the right side, eight inches. And then I'm going to create a nice arc at these two points. And um, I will... Uh, Go ahead and sorry, I had to get my thoughts there for a minute. Uh, let me turn off these axes for a moment. All right, let's go ahead and delete that. Well, that was silly. Uh, push pull tool again and let's push that down uh, 0.75 to get rid of that. And that's going to be one of my sides there. All right. Now, at that point, I can go ahead and uh, triple click on that. Hit the letter G for component, create a component. And um, I'll just call this a side. And hit create. All right. Let's give this component some color since we have a white background going on here and everything. And let me see if I can turn on my mouse highlighter so you can uh, not lose the mouse on the uh, white background. Let me get up to the mouse highlight. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of give this a color. Uh, let's go with just some. All right. Cool beans. All right, now I want to go into my standard camera view, kind of like a front view, and I want to see kind of which way I'm facing. So that tells me I need to rotate this. I'm going to hit the letter Q, and um, I'm going to rotate on my red axis 90 degrees. Excellent. Let's go to our standard camera view front. There we go. All right, now let's go look from the side. Let's go to the right side for a moment. Nope, sorry about that. Left side, there we go. All right, I'm going to move, hit the M key for move and I'm gonna grab this and I'm going to hold the control key down and move a copy here. Um, and the uh, copy, I'm butting up against that first shelf. And then I'm actually going to pull it out now uh, with the move tool. And let me see if I can get it out on its axis here. Work with me there. Okay, bear with me a second. It was, uh, there we go. And I want to go nine inches. Okay. Now on the back, it's just a simple butt joint, right? Um, and uh, basically on the back, 
if they've got just a three quarter inch piece and it is three quarters um, push pull 0.75 and they kind of just got it uh, butt jointed like that and kind of screwed in and everything. Um, I'm going to do uh, similar to that, but I'm going to do pocket screws on the back here. Uh, and um, I'm going to pocket screw that for the joinery. Now, down at the bottom, they have, I'm uh, just kind of drawing this out. They have a small piece that, uh, again, let me hit that push-pull tool, 0.75. We've got kind of just a small piece that, you know, sits in there and all of this is open except for where the cubby hold is. There's a little doorway up here and I don't want that. Right. So I want to. Um, uh, I want to. Uh, come in and um, I want to add drawers in here, like little slide out, you know, small trays and drawers and everything, uh, everything that kind of slides out and stuff. Um, so I've got an idea how I want to do that, uh, and everything. Um, and when the drawers, you know, stack in, they're gonna, the kind of the faces of them are gonna kind of follow this curve somehow or another, right? We'll figure that out. But, um, on the, uh, top of this piece, there is a part that comes out slightly. Push pull. 0.75. This too. 0.75. Let me uh, get rid of that. And on the sides, it bulges out. Push pull. I'm going to take the tape measure tool and kind of uh, mark a guideline there so I can stay somewhat consistent. Pull. Now, <clears throat> on this part, they, um, it's, it's a little bit more rounded back and everything. It's, it's not quite as <laughs> T-boned that I have it here and everything, but, um, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna change that up a little bit. So, uh, but I just wanted to kind of get it to show you kind of what you know they've got going on. Now, the most important detail of this is the the raising, the elevating of the top and everything and all. And I want to keep the exact design. They have a square one inch by one inch tube, and then they have a um, kind of a slightly undersized or, or square tube, square, you know, square uh, extrusion, one inch by one inch. And then inside, they've got probably like a, you know, a seven eighths round metal tube that goes inside of it with knobs and stuff. Um, the square tube, let me get this.
here so that I can draw it in the correct place. But that square tube One is a lonely number. Let's try that again. Now that goes straight out. And I... I'm trying, I'm trying one more time. One. Four inches, one inch. All right, one more time. I don't know why I'm struggling. <laughs> ah, Lord of mercy. Okay, one more time. Let's get that there, and let's get that there. Okay. I don't know why I'm, why I was struggling with that. But um, we're going to push-pull this out. One inch. Okay. And then we're going to push pull this up. I need to go to the top here and then I need to go another uh, three quarters of an inch up from there. And they have 90 degree. They have another one inch tube. And I'll fix all of this and pull it out in just a second. But they have another one inch tube that comes right to the back of that. And it doesn't quite go to the end. Um, It kind of goes like that. And then this part here, um, you know, it kind of, it, this part is part of that rounded front. It doesn't end here. It actually comes out here and it rounds over. And this uh, square tubing is just to support this. And uh, again, I'm going to change it up. So I'll just draw this one side. I'm not going to worry about this wood top because that wood top's going to get gone here in just a minute. Um, but uh, what I want to do is I'm going to make the part that goes on this square tube, I'm going to make this out of wood. So what they have is right now there's a plastic cap that goes over the square tube. There's a nut kind of... Um, uh, like a threaded insert kind of nut on the side of it where the, uh, like a little star knob kind of screws in and it puts pressure on that pipe. So, you know, it doesn't fall down, right? It, that's what holds it in. Um, and so on the bottom of that cap, it's square to slide over this uh, extrusion here. But at the top, there's a round circle. So the extrusion can slide in the middle. Now, before I do that, I'm going to hollow out uh, this tube here. And basically, I'm going to find the center point of this rectangle. And that's going to give me the point here. And the tube uh, is going to be kind of a... It's not going to be a full half inch. It's going to be more like a 7 16 inch radius. 
and I'm going to hollow this out. I'll just push pull it. to hollow that out. And um, the extrusion, now let me, let me take this part. And let me turn off some faces here for a moment. As I was going along, I forgot to turn these into components. So they're just individual uh, surfaces, faces and things. And so therefore, when one face is drawn and connected to a face that's not a component, it kind of melds, molds into, um, into that component. All right, one more little line back here. Oh, you son of a gun, you. <laughs> oh. I'm going to get rid of this top. I'll redraw that stuff in it. Take just two seconds to draw it back in. Um, but uh, I'm going to get it out of my way for right now. Could have done this better. If I would have, I'm just jumping ahead and not paying attention to what I've drawn and all that jazz. Okay. All right. Now let me take this component right here and let me hide it for a moment and get rid of all the geometry here that um, isn't part of my square tube. So this little dash, this line here and that little dash. So there's my square tube. Uh, I'm going to keep it just like that. I do not need a line here or there. Okay. Wonderful. Now I'm going to select that square tube and I'm going to group it together. G for group into a component. So that way that stuff doesn't happen again. So let's unhide my other wall here. And once again, very quickly, I'm going to put the back back in. Uh, so Push pull that three quarters, 0.75. And now I'm going to triple click on that to make that a component as well. Um, so that uh, I don't, you know, when I'm selecting it and everything, I'm not uh, coming in. This here, I'm going to make that a component also. But I'm, I don't know if I'm going to keep that. So we'll deal with that later. Okay, now this component is going to get copied to the other side. So I'm going to hold down the move tool, M for move. I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to drag this. And let's try that again. Move, control, and alternate. I'm going to keep it on its... 
green axis there. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I'm struggling. Hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's go control and shift. Thank you very much. I was hitting the alternate key instead of the shift key. Shift to keep it on its axis. I kept hitting. I get my keys mixed up. So I was hitting the alternate, not the shift. The shift is what I wanted uh, to keep that axis in line. Okay. So now... Um, the <clears throat> tubing, uh, we'll go ahead and I'm going to find the midpoint. Come out. I don't know why it's way down there. All right, push, pull. Okay, triple click on this and group. Okay, so now I should be able to... Um, slide that down into the hole and once again if i hold the control key down and the shift key i should be able to keep on that axis oh there we go okay now there's a cap there's a cat set screw. Yep. There's a cap that goes over this that kind of uh, the, the, the square tube is the square tube. Uh, now this part is welded, right? And uh, I don't, I don't have a welding. Uh, I don't weld. So I'm going to figure out like if I'm going to do a little bracket here or something. I don't think this tube here is necessary. Um, I can just put a block of wood. So I'm going to make an executive decision and I'm going to go into this component and I'm going to delete this square part right here. I'll make it a block of wood instead of a metal piece of the tubing because it's not necessary. And I don't, I don't have a little welder. Okay. Now by removing that, since this is a copy, it should have removed the other side for me as well. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Use the arrow keys to lock your axis. Thank you. Jason CNC, man. I appreciate you. Thank you for that. I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not like proficient, uh, you know, hundred percent proficient in this just yet. All right. So now what I want to do is I'm going to create the cap for this and the cap, I'm going to create the cap kind of off to the side here. The cap fits over the one inch by one inch square tube. It has uh, about a wall thickness of like a quarter of an inch and everything. Um, so I'm going to uh, go 1.5 comma 1.5. I'm going to... 
extrude this up, push pull, and I'm just going to go um, for right now three quarters. No, one inch. Mm. Let me measure this. That's one and a half. Push pull. Okay. Now, on the offset of this, I'm going to offset this in a quarter of an inch. <clears throat> and if uh, all is right with the world, that should be my one inch by one inch square right there. Right, 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 right. Now, on the bottom side of this, okay, let me draw this on the bottom here. Let's do this again. Offset 0.25. On the bottom side here, this uh, push-pull, this comes up uh, and it sits about one inch. Okay. And then on the top side, let me get my center point. Girl, you better work with me now. There we go. The, uh, that seven sixteen inch hole or, you know, that pipe that's coming through, um, it, uh, it goes through the rest of the way. So we're going to push pull that and um, it's going to go 0 0.5 and that should create that part. All right now, let me get rid of this uh, rectangle. I don't need it. Now, on the side, they have a nut. They have a nut that uh, is kind of, um, it's not a real threaded insert. It's just a nut. And um, I'm going to be making this cap out of walnut. Uh, and this wall thickness is you know a quarter of an inch and everything um i'm just i think i'm just gonna epoxy a nut a quarter 20 nut in there uh and everything you know i'll create the recess or the pocket for the nut so the Um, I believe in, let me, let me look at something really quickly. So if we go, if we go one quarter 20 nut dimensions, I should be able to get like a chart in the images. Because um, what I want to do is, <coughs> excuse me, is basically I literally, I, I, I want to create a circle that's uh, just undersized because uh, the CNC is going to cut it. I'm not going to try to cut an octagon for the nut. I could with a small bit to get pretty close and everything like a 16th inch end mill and all that, blah, blah, blah. But I, I'm not going to get, you know, that fancy. But I do want to make sure that, you know, when I tap this nut in and everything that it, you know, kind of cuts its own edges in the circle and also where it, you know, it's slightly, it's a 0.5 inches from long point to long point and then flat to flat on its side, it's 0.438 inches. Um, and so if I come in at, 
hell, if I come in at uh, 0.425, that should be fine, right? So I'm just going to take the tape measure. Uh, I'm going to come down. I'll find the center and here point four two five will be point <laughs> oh I don't know why I feel so dumb right now let me see here uh, point four two five divided by two point two one two five. I don't know why I couldn't do that in my head. Uh, point two one two five. Okay. Okie dokie, dokie dokie. That'll be that. All right, so that'll be the part that I need to make. So now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the guidelines. That's going to be one of the pieces that I need to make. Um, I will cut that on the CNC. Uh, G for group. Let's put that into position. Move. Bear with me a moment. All right. Move from there. Let me move. Oh. Okay. I just want to be on the side of the tube right there. Okay. Now, if I come up here and if I would have drug this up and snap this to the top right here, right? So that opening all the way to the, it's the total overall length is an inch and a half, right? Um, one inch is the square opening and then a half inch is that circular opening at the top. So if I were to, you know, just take and snap this to here, I can then, you know, I could move this down this axis uh, one inch, right? Uh, and, um, you know, that puts me where I'm supposed to be. Okie dokie. What's good? All right. Now, okay, let's see if I can do this. Okie dokie. Oh, <laughs> all right. Now, okie dokie. All right. Now, this needs to be flipped. 
So I'm going to flip that along the green axis. That hole should be on the other side. All right. So that's what the podium is looking like so far. Now the top and the bottom. That's going to be my, my biggest challenge is drawing the top and the bottom. I'm not great with curves and contours and things like that. Um, and uh, um, you know, uh, so I'm better at drawing the curves and contours in Vetric than I am SketchUp. So I'll fix, I'm going to draw it just so I'll have it here, but then I want to fix it in SketchUp and everything. Um, I got a question here. It says, uh, is the nut hole bottom still in the round part of the block? Not partly in the square part, right? The hole uh, is just in the round part where the screw comes in and puts pressure on that pipe that's sliding up and down. It puts pressure on the pipe uh to uh, uh thread in to just you know hold pressure against the pipe if i go down into the square section and everything there's too much of a gap there and uh you know and everything so that hole is up into the uh just in this section that within that half inch section at the top that's just all circular right all that meat there and then below that uh is the you know the square part and all. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The drawers are going to be the most interesting part of this project. And all. But let's get the top drawn really quickly. Um, all right. So this top, let's take a look at it uh, again in uh, pictures, the top and the bottom. And let's... Uh, There we go. So there's the top. So it's got a slight little curve here. Now this is 22 inches overall by 16 inches to the outside edge here from the center there out 16 inches and then 15 inches to the inside of this little contour of this curve, right? Uh, so it's just got big, you know, big radius and everything like, a, you know, a big arch and all. Not great at drawing that, you know, sort of stuff and everything, but um, uh, yeah, Brooks, it, it shouldn't split. All we're doing is uh, the hole is just undersized to where it's the points of the nut that are going to cut, cut in and uh, uh, it's going to be hardwood. It shouldn't split. All right. the uh, So let's try to draw this top. Now, once again, um, I'm going to draw a rectangle to kind of give me just a foundation to, uh, work off for a moment. But, um, this top is 21 inches. So 22 inches, sorry. Uh, 22 inches and then, um, 16 inches and then there's an inch Um, one inch here. And so the, there's a big radius. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a, uh, uh, let's go with a three inch radius. So let me take, and I'm going to measure up three inches over three inches over three inches oh. and then this one is going to be more along the line of a five inch radius uh, let's see here um Using the arc tool, to create that, um, uh, 
part. Okay. Push pull. Oops. Point seven five. All right. Triple click G for group and um, the uh, Let me take a measurement here real quick. Bear with me one second. That's way more than an inch. I see what I did. 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 I'm a goofball. All right. Hold on one second. All right. Bear with me one second. I saw what I did. Um, the, uh, I used the wrong line, uh, the wrong line. So it need to be from the front here back. From here to here, this goes up this inch. From here to here. And then from here to here. Ooh, hold on a minute. Oh, I'm, hold on a second. I'm working with the wrong guideline. Ugh. All right, one more time. Let me do a guideline. This guideline needs to be up three inches from there. That will do it. That's what I need. One more time. From there to there. Pull it up to that line. From here to here. Snap. You got a snap. <laughs> I can't get it to snap to its tangent. All right. From there to there to there. Okie dokie, tokie dokie. Now I can get rid of. All this. Okay. That's more like it. Push, pull, up three quarters, enter. Triple click, one, two, three, G, enter for component. All right, now let's give that a little bit of color so we can see what it is. Okay, let's give it a different color. There we go. All right, now this assembly sits on here. Bear with me just a moment. All 
Okay, and then <laughs> One more time. All right, let's change the color of that. I'm going to make it kind of a dark. Brown. Yep. All right, so in a nutshell, that's really all the, all the parts I need to draw to start laying this out in Vetric. Um, the I am going to be using, so let me just give you a, let me give you a rundown of what I'm using for the parts. So let me pull myself up here. Um, okay. So uh, I'm going to be using the one inch by one inch. I'm going to use aluminum tubing. Uh, uh, the block cap that's going to go over that aluminum tubing, I'm going to make it out of walnut, uh, most likely. I'm going to use some contrasting woods and stuff. Um, the rods that are going to go up, um, I'm only it's only holding my laptop and everything, so um, I have choices here. Uh, I can use, like, maple dowel, uh, you know, um, the... Give me just a moment here. Five times two equals. Yeah. Um, maple dowel, it would be, you know, seven eighths of an inch uh, in diameter. Um, and the at the top so what my thought process is is this top right here okay i'm gonna make this bracket and everything or i'm gonna use this one one of the two but this circular dowel here is one inch and um If I have a seven eighths inch dowel here, a one inch dowel there, then I can set that dowel on a, I can create a jig, kind of a V shaped jig on my CNC, and I can mill a seven eighths inch pocket hole for that thing to fit on. And then I can glue those two parts together to create this assembly. Now let's take a look at um, this here. You see now they've got theirs. Uh, it's hard to see in the uh, with my head in the way, number one, but also it's really dark. So let's take a look at a. Let's take a look at a video real quick, a video clip. And before the video plays, let me pause. Let me get my head out of the way again. All right. So this is just a simple clip. Okay. 
kind of an overview of the part. Uh, I'll make that little uh, piece that, that, you know, that stops the laptop from sliding off. But uh, the brackets, I'll either keep those brackets and reuse them or I'll make them out of wood. Right. I'll just cut the part of the CNC. There's that cap there that goes over the metal tubing. And the metal tubing just goes to the base. Right. Uh, the inside, again, it's just open. Uh, and uh, I want drawers. And we're eliminating that cubby holder. It's all going to be drawers all the way up and everything. And um, so. The caps are going to be wood. Uh, the, the knob and everything is just going to be a quarter 20 knob. Um, the side of the um, up there at the top, the side of the dowel is going to have a threaded insert in it for the lid to be able to tilt. It's still going to have that ability to tilt and everything. None of that is uh, changing. Um See if we can get back up underneath here. All right there. Pause. Pause. Okay. Let me uh, find the clearest image. So basically, <clears throat> you know, this bracket here is screwed to the bottom of the, you know, the of the top. It. There's a hole there that this uh, round part just sits in, right? That's what allows it to swivel. And then there's a slot cut in here uh, and then a knob that just screws into, I'll have a threaded insert. I'll have a, and it's a certain distance so that, you know, it doesn't, that whole rod moves up right and down and all. So that threaded insert, when I put it in quarter 20 threaded insert, that's where it's going to be. Right. And it'll match up with this group. Now, um, I could repurpose the hardware, right? I could repurpose the hardware, um, but I can also make this, you know, I could, this could give me an opportunity to do some contrasting woods and things, right? Um, I could make this part out of, you know, wood, but it would be, if I made it out of wood, it'd be a little thicker. This would be just too thin. It would be, it would break too easily, right? Metal, I can understand. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Wood, I just got to make it thicker, right? So it's got some beef to it and everything. But um, I don't know. Give me your opinions in the, uh, in the chat. Let me know what you think. Um, let's see here. Uh, is the base heavy enough to prevent the from? Oh, absolutely. Yes, it's on wheels. There's three wheels, one in the back. Or no, I'm sorry. There's four wheels, uh, two, uh, two in the front, two in the back. Uh, and uh, this thing doesn't rock. It doesn't tip. It doesn't uh, it doesn't shake, shimmy or anything. It's stout. It's sturdy. That's why I like it so much. Even when I have it extended up high to where I can stand up straight and work, you know, on the computer and all, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't wobble, nothing. That's why I like it. But I don't like that. I mean, it's all solid MDF. So it is MDF, just so you know, the whole, the whole uh, part um, is MDF and um, let me see if I can uh, get around here and but the it's got a paper coating on it like a wallpaper type coating on it to make it you know that faux wood grain right and the paper is just delaminating if you will um, and uh, but for MDF I mean it's solid it's got weight to it being made out of hardwood. Uh, it's going to also have weight to it as well. Right. So everybody's saying, or a couple of people are saying recycle the hinge. I think I probably will. That'd be, you know, a good idea. Uh, but, um, uh, I have no concern of this tipping over at all. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't even 
doesn't even act like when I'm rolling it around and moving it out of my way, it doesn't even act like it wants to tip or, or anything like that. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm confident with that and everything. Uh, so the, uh, I do not know. Uh, I'm not going to use, I want to make this out of wood really nice wood and everything. Uh, I can recycle the bracket. That's not a problem, but I am going to use wooden dowel. So seven eighths inch, one inch. Um, and this short dowel here, I'm going to literally put it in a jig, uh, kind of a V shaped jig, clamp it to where it can't rock or roll or anything. And I'm going to have my CNC come and cut that seven eighths of an inch, you know, so the two parts can be glued together and everything um, on that to make that. There's going to be a threaded insert into the side here where uh, it'll line up with this bracket, threaded insert to the side of this shaft, and then we'll go there. Um, <laughs> the Earth's core. Uh, where's the center of gravity? Uh, I don't know. I'm a woodworker, not a scientist. Honestly, Brooks, I have no clue. Um, the base is the weight, right? These rods go up and down. There's a tilting table that the computer sits on, right? So the base is all the weight. There's, it doesn't tip. Uh, that's all I know. I don't know where the center of gravity is. And I haven't tried to push it over or any of that stuff. So that's a question that I wouldn't be able to answer. Um, the uh but it's it's solid doesn't look solid you know like this you know it looks real small and dinky it's actually not it's got some bulk to it and everything but you know that's that now let's go back really quickly and let's talk about um let me uh hide this and explode this for a moment and hide this. All right. Now, one of the other things that's going to make this uh, weightier, weightier, weightier is uh I'm going to have this drawers, even short little, short little drawers, you know, a few inches. Uh, this is eight inches. Well, seven and three quarter inches right here. Right. So I can have a seven and three quarter inch drawer, you know, and they're going to get longer and longer and longer as they go through. Uh, and they're just going to be little bit drawers. I might have, you know, five or six drawers here, one large one for whatever. Uh, and then a series of shallower ones, you know, not very, not very deep and everything. So if I were to, um, let me take, this. Hide that. Leave me, let me just this one part here. Um, what I have to work with, this is 21 inches tall here. Okay. And um, so I can have a larger drawer. That... Uh, I'll have a, uh, I need the front not to, you know, it's going to be secured from the bottom and everything. So the front's not going to wobble or anything. So I don't need that cross piece in there. This can be a drawer front right here. 
and everything. And so that's four inches tall. So my bottom drawer, I can do a four inch drawer and everything there. Um, and from there, this curve, I, I want to make it decorative. <laughs> um, it would look sharp if the faces match the side panel profile. That's exactly what the, the goal is. That's going to be the end game is that the faces match the profile here all the way up, right? And so, you know, on the... Um, Jor... What do I want? Let's see. I'll make a three inch drawer there. And um, the and if anybody has ever made curved faces or anything. Jump in the chat. Jump in the chat. Um, but uh, what I'm thinking is there's going to be some type of cove cut. <laughs> you have to bear with me. I've, I've, I don't do curved faces that much. So let me see here. Hold on a second. Um, What I'm looking for, ladies and gentlemen, is I guess it would it would be called contoured. Um contoured, not curved, it's not curved. What would the arched? Oh, the um, so the bottom drawer push pull, right? Uh, the faces are going to be three quarters of an inch thick, the drawer front faces. So imagine, if you will, that I have a uh, four inch by three quarter, 0.75 comma four, enter, push, pull. This will be the, you know, drawer front. And then the drawer itself um, The drawer itself is not going to be that tall, you know, um, and uh, I'm 
You know what I mean? So the trick of it is, and there'll be a little bit of an air space to the next drawer. And I'm putting it on wooden slides. I'm not going to try to get find the drawer slides or anything for this. I'm basically going to uh, have grooves cut, dados cut, not grooves. Uh, I'm going to have dados cut in here uh, that'll act as a stop. And on the sides of the drawers, they'll have, um, they'll be able to uh, slide and everything. Let's see here. From the back difference cabinet to the front. So um, John says uh, a gouging plane, right? Yeah, uh, molding toolpath. So it would be a molding toolpath. It were, or it would be a you know it would be a toolpath modeling. It would definitely be three D modeling. We'll have to make that. But uh, John says, what is the length of the bottom of the jaw face to the top of the jaw face? Um, on the bottom drawer face, uh, it's going to be, so it's four inches tall, nine inches wide, right? Um, three quarter inches thick. So that's the drawer face. The, um, now from the back difference cabinet to the front to get the concave contour, right? So imagine if you will. I'm going to do an offset right on this part right here. So off the, I don't know if it'll let me offset off of a component's edge that's grouped together. No, let me ungroup it real quick. First of all, before I ungroup that, let me group this one together. Okay. So let me ex work into here. And if I did an offset 0.75, right? Um, imagine if you will, and let me let me uh, let me delete this and this just so you can kind of get an idea of what's what's happening here. Um, let me take and move control. Let me just copy this over here. And uh, let me take on this copy. Let me draw a line down here. And align. We'll follow that same curve. Oops. All right, now. If I push pull this down, oops, hold on. Hold your horses there, buddy bro. Make unique. Everything I was doing to this one was happening to the other one. Make unique. Um, that way when I do something to this, it's... Uh, not going to get done to, you know, the other thing. All right. So now let me push, pull this out nine inches. Right. Now imagine that this is all the drawer fronts and imagine that, um, these drawers, you know, the first drawer, let's say is going to be four inches tall, right? And yeah, I'll definitely do it in a spire. Um, but the 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 first drawer is going to be four inches tall. And then the next drawer, this part here, is 
Um, let's say, let me get a tape measure here. Let's say, uh, I go three and a sixteenth. And let me draw a line there. Now, the back of this jaw. Um, here where these drawers, you got to think of like boxes. So let me go, let me create kind of a, um, I'll go two and a half. Two point five, comma, and I'll just go um, eight inches for right now. Right, the jaw itself, the sides of the jaw are gonna be, you know, they're gonna have to have that contour and everything. But there, think of like a straight line. There's a kind of a straight line in here, and then there's a curve in this so um let me get rid of those two lines Ooh. those two lines there and um the Let me get rid of these lines so they don't confuse the situation. That one I'll keep. This. Um, you know, imagine that being a jaw right there. The jaw is not going to be that tall. Um, but. It'll be, it'll be slightly, you know, less, but there's going to be that contour or there's going to be a straight angle line. Okay. Yeah. There's going to be, there's going to be spaces. There's going to be 16th of an inch spaces between the jaw fronts. So you'd have to imagine that, uh, Give me just a second. Bum, 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 bum. Give me just a moment. Oops. Okay, so imagine if you could, there's going to, you know, to be able to follow that curve this part 
and it's on the front. The front part is what's going to follow the curve, right? The back side is probably going to be just a straight edge, you know, right? Think of the flat back of the board, right? And it's only the front that's going to have kind of that contour and everything. Um, but the um, there's going to be that, you know, those angle cuts and everything. And if this was a straight line, right? So if that was a flat back there, the, um, you know, let's say that this, let's say that this drawer is going to be uh, two inches. And then from there, there's another 16th or what have you. And so if I draw a line from here to here, if I draw a line from here to here, I can push pull this out all the way to the other side. Um, come in and delete that line there and the line back there to create this space. And then on the side here, if I draw a straight line from this point to this point, oops, right? So it's a flat back. That's what's going to be sitting on the table, right? See you, Brooks. Um, that's going to be sitting on the flat back of the table, right? And then you're going to have this angle cut, chop saw, table saw, tilt the blade, whatever. This angle cut, so I have to determine what the angles are going to be. But then... This cut is going to be, you know, the curve, right? There's going to be a curve to there. Um, there's going to be a curve. If I draw a straight line from point to point, there's that slight curve right there, right? You know? Um, and that would be, that's the curves that I have to, that I have to, uh, determine what they are. And they're just going to be a, you know, I'll use a quarter inch ball nose, you know, that board is going to be laying flat. Uh, the model cut will cut that curve and everything in the top. And then the two angle cuts will be cut at the table saw. Right. And it's just going to be a matter of figuring out how tall the drawers are, you know, what I want my drawer fronts to be. Right. Um, and now this might not be the right approach, ladies and gentlemen, but this is the approach that I'm going to take. Uh, you know, I'm going to have my boards laying flat. Right. So they'll be flat back here uh, and everything. It's just going to be the front that's going to be milled to be curved. You know, when they're all together, they're going to create that that faux curve, if you will. Right. Um, and. Uh, uh, but, um, and then just the angle cut, you know, figuring out what that angle cut is. And if I need to figure out what that angle cut is, what that angle is, um, I can break out the protractor and from here to here, it's 54 degrees, right? So that inside angle there is a 54 degree angle and on this bottom side the that's 126 degrees and that's going to be the outside angle there 
um, you know, from here to here. So, yeah, on this protractor, if I go from here, oops, sorry, from here over to there, that's 126 degrees, right? So 54 degree on this cut. And then this cut here should be pretty close to um, pretty close to that. Let's see. <coughs> Let me uh, Let me delete this one. Let me go to the protractor again. Protractor. I'll go down the back leg first to here. Or, or on it. Which is going to, uh, which is going to be the better from the back, from the back, because it's flat. All right, so yeah, 54 degree angle. So um, basically, uh, 36 degrees, if I tilt my blade 36 degrees, that should give me 90 minus 36 is 54, right? Right, right? Right, so um that'll give me that cut and then each one is just going to be you know different and everything it's going to be unique for sure now i don't know if i can figure this out you know by the nice class but um i want the jaws to follow the curve i want them to have that right i want them to have that curve so um the fronts will get modeled I gotta figure first of all, I gotta figure out I gotta figure out exactly how big my jaw fronts are gonna be because that's gonna tell the jaw fronts are gonna tell me, you know, where I create my dividers. I'm gonna go back and recreate those. But um, um I'm gonna have a sixteenth of an inch spacing in between each jaw front. And uh once I have the jaw fronts laid out, because again, when I, you know, when I cut this, imagine that this was one jaw right here. Um, you know, uh, imagine if you will, that I come down, let's say, one and seven eighths right for that jaw front one and seven eighths a uh, very shallow little tray type jaw or something um and i draw that line there from there a sixteenth of an inch down there's going to be another line right and then Oops. Let's try that line again from there to there. And then, uh, you know, that's cut 9.75. And if I click a straight line from this to that, You know, the back of my board is going to be flat. I just, that'll give me my angle cuts that I need to cut. And then also it'll give me kind of the curve. Now, here's the great thing about this. If I can get this drawn exactly right. If I can get this drawn exactly right. 
I can add a color to this edge in SketchUp. I can come in and I can, oops, I can come in. Let me get rid of this uh, guideline real quick. Bear with me just one quick second. I can add a color to this. Let's say that I make it a bright red, right, to that face. Now, in Vetric, when I go to Vetric, Vetric, VCarve, Aspire, Vetric VCarve Desktop, or what have you, uh, we're going to save this as Podium. When I'm in Vetric, when I go to import, that file, Let me see where I saved it. <laughs> okay. I found it. Um, <coughs> excuse me. When I go to import that file in the dialog box here, I can orientate the material. The face with the selected material is the top face, right? Um, and I can come in here and, you know, choose whatever color it is. And if I go back to SketchUp, that color was color AO2, A02. So in Vetric, if I come into the list here, I can choose that color A02. And um, the uh, do, 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 do. On that one part, I'm only it, only the one has the color on it, right? But um, you know, when it comes in, it gives me this vector right here, and on that vector, I can use that to create the model, right? The model of that curve. Um, the because this is flat, right? If I come in here and let me ungroup this. If I come in here on this vector, which is right there, right? If I come in and change the pivot point. Well, let's try that again. Do, 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 do. All right, there's the pivot point, thank you. If I drag that pivot point to the corner here, and I'll drag a guideline down from the ruler as well to that corner also, I can then come in and I can rotate. If I know the exact dimension or whatever, um, I can, uh, you know, uh, I can, if I know the, the exact angle or whatever, I can, I can type that in, but I can also uh, come in and rotate. This, um, oops, I keep missing, sorry, I keep missing my guideline. Dang it, I was short on that one. Hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, snap. Hmm. 
There we go. Okay. So once I have that part flat, now I have this contour right here that I can create that model component off of. Right. So now I have that shape that, uh, you know, I can I can take this profile and I can sweep it. I can create I'm not in Aspire to create that model and everything, but I could also use the um, when I have the actual parts laid out, the actual the actual top and everything. But uh, this is the profile that I can sweep across. And I can do that with each and every one of these, right? If I have that flat back, all I have to do is just lay them flat, right? And then I have the curve and all. So that face is all I need. Um, I don't need the fronts or any of that stuff, uh, you know, those vectors and all. I need that side profile so I can get that curve. And then that curve can get swept across. And I should have opened it up in a spire, but um, uh, it can get swept across. Let me let me take this vector and copy it. Oh, let me go into a spire. I would like to get like six or seven small drawers out of that. I probably, I can do that. No problem, but, um, create a new file. On this, my drawer was one and I'll just, uh, um, break out my tape measure here. One and seven eighths by three quarter. Oh, 1.875. The drawer itself was nine inches, nine and a quarter inches long, three quarter inches thick. And it would help if I put the dimensions in the right box, nine and a quarter along my X, one and seven eighths along my Y. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now I should be able to paste. I didn't think that was going to let me paste into Vetric. So file export DXF uh, sample drawer front. Go back into the Aspire and import that vector. That should be straight up and down. There we go. Good, 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 good. All right. So I don't need this back leg. I just need this, uh, this contour right here. Um, and I do not need the... Uh, I do not need the 
Yeah, I'll I'll keep the side legs in there. All right, so uh, let's go to node editing. Let's remove that back span. Draw my guidelines, guide rails across the top, spacebar across the bottom, spacebar. Go into the two rail sweep tool in modeling. Select the drive rails, the profile. All right. <laughs> Let's see here. Don't do what I just did. Let me think about this just for a second. I got to get my thoughts here. That profile is getting swept. It's only creating that. This is my drawer front. <laughs> all right i got it i got it i got it i got it all right so hold on a second um this is going to be it's not quite it's a little bit larger than one in seven eight so let me measure real quick my vertical height I'm just going to That's my angle cuts. Give me just a second, ladies and gentlemen. Rotate the profile, John says. I know um That profile is getting swept across the top of my board here. So the angles, I need to go into node editing mode. I need to delete this span and this span. And this span. The... Part, I need to center up and down on the material. There we go. And I need to create a three quarter inch leg. Okay. So a three quarter inch piece of material. Imagine if you will, three quarter inches thick. Um, so 
0.75. Now, if I snap this to the give me just a moment. Oh, shit. It's like, why isn't it letting me grab it? Okay. If I snap this to the front, and I snap this to the front, I come into node editing. Get rid of this backspan. I don't need that. Get rid of this span. And then trim that. Okay. That's the profile I need to sweep across. And let's see, John, we'll see if we have to rotate that profile or not. Um, but I believe I'm <laughs> from, God damn well, I don't know. I'm, my mind is blown a minute ago. Okay, so select that and that. That's going to be our two rail sweep. That's going to be our drive rails. This is going to be our profile getting swept across those drive rails. <laughs> All right, I'm rotating it. <laughs> What? Why would I rotate that? Give me a second. I don't know why the hell my mind is not working right. Why, why is, why am I not working right here? Select that and that. That's my drive rails. I'm going that way. I'm sweeping that profile. Sweeping this profile. John, thanks, man. John's like, dude, I told you to rotate the profile like an hour ago. <laughs> uh, I, dog, I'm, why was I? Okay. That is the pro, I mean, that's the top of my board, right? That's so, I guess it has to be upright like that. But anyway, that is the cut, right? That would be the, the cut for that, uh, you know, the 3D cut for that. Uh, piece of material and then on my ends i do my uh you know my angle cuts uh on the top and the bottom here do the angle cut you know through the table saw but that is the cut thank you john you were right i uh i should i'm a dumb anyway yeah ah! <laughs> oh my god i'm sitting there like john's like yeah man i told you dude all right so but uh, so that's how I would get that profile. Now, um, <coughs> if I was doing this in VCAR Pro, then I could use the molding toolpath. The molding toolpath uh, should allow me uh, to do the same thing. Uh, let me kind of delete this. If I had just the molding toolpath, and I'm even though I'm in Aspire, it could be Vetric too. Um, the uh i'll use a uh a quarter inch ball nose should be should not be oversized um i'll use that and i only need to uh have one path I'm going to be sweeping this profile along this path here. 
Uh, and um, uh, I just need to draw a line. Let me see. I don't think I don't think it's a single line like that. Um, there we go. Uh, and calculate. Yeah. It's backwards. So let me change. Let me reverse that direction. Yep. And so I could create that tool path um, with the molding tool path as well. I don't have to have a spire to do it and everything. Um, and uh, basically, let me turn this off. Uh, let me delete this model. You have, you just draw your one guideline across the top and your profile here. You select that guideline first and then that profile. And when you're in that molding tool path, you know, it should sweep it across, you know. And basically think of this green dot right here rotated to line up with this green dot, right? So it's sweeping that from here. So that green dot, it's sweeping that there all the way across, right? And everything. So that's going to be an interesting, uh, so what I want to do, because I really would love to release this file to you guys and girls to make. It's a really nice computer stand. It's very basic, right? There's nothing, a whole lot to it. But uh, with the casters and everything um, and the jaws, it's going to be nice. I will take the time and figure out all the spacing and angles and everything. We'll come back and revisit this project uh, when I have when I release the files to you and everything. But um, we will come into Vetric with all the parts and we'll create all the tool paths. We'll do the, um, and then, but I'll, by the, by the time we come back and revisit this, uh, I'll have all the angle cuts. So I'll be able to, I'll have notes for you all for your table saw cuts for the angle cuts for the, each of the drawer fronts. And, um, uh, and all the profiles, perfectly created you know all the profiles perfectly created for the either the two rail sweep if you're modeling it or the molding tool path and um i'll have the profiles orientated in the correct direction right uh i use the two rail sweep to make guitar fret boards that's how I <laughs> no john you're good man my mind was just i'm thinking i'm thinking you know i'm going along the width turn it that way so it sweeps across right you know but uh it wants to be upright it needs the top it, it all makes sense now I, I i just got stupid for a minute um but uh but my challenge uh is gonna be um creating these drawer boxes so number one, uh, you'll have the dimensions of the drawer boxes themselves, right? And all the rabbits and dado cuts. We'll have those those uh, uh, vectors, uh, you know, for for the CNC. Um, could be done on a router table too. But um, the drawer fronts, that's going to be the most challenge. And then we'll have all the vectors for all the side parts, the caps, and everything um, for, you know, this... Uh, Um, this piece right and let me get out of that and go to edit unhide all right so I'll have all the vectors and dimensions for our little blocks we'll be able to cut them on the CNC 
Uh, this will be aluminum tubing. This will be dowel stock. I'll have the dimensions of that. And then our drawer fronts all the way through that nice curve uh, and everything. Where our drawer fronts are going to follow that curve. And that, and then uh, all the dados in the side, you know, how the drawers are going to slide out and also how the pot, the stops, they got to stop, right? You know, uh, so they don't pull all the way out, right? So I'll put all that together and this will be a, uh, we'll come, when we come back and revisit this, we will create all the tool paths in Vetric. I'll have all the vectors ready and everything. We'll create all the tool paths in Vetric and everything. And then I'll release the files to you all. Um, what would you use? Ronnie Probert says, what would you use for a, um, what would you use for a drawer pull? It could be a, a single pull or anything right now on the, um, on this, you know, it just has, uh, you know, the silver drawer pull, right. Uh, and everything, just a single, just a single knob, uh, but uh, I'm not going to do any, uh, I'm not going to do any, like, you know, make, I'm not going to do any carving where you, you know, carve it and all that stuff. Uh, it's just going to be a simple, uh, you know, handle. Uh, it could be a single handle knob like that, or it could be just a, a simple little U handle and everything. But so now that I've got the design and thanks for coming along in this journey with me, um, what we will do is in the next class, we will have all of the vectors for the drawer fronts and the drawers. We will uh, get those imported into VCARB or Aspire, whichever one. Um, and uh, we will create the tool pass to make all the cuts for these. Uh, now, these panels here are 22 inches by 16. They're going to be glued up panels, right? So uh, they'll be glued up panels. This is 21 by 12 and three quarters. 21 inches by 12 and three quarters for the side there. So every bit of this could be made even on a small CNC, right? Uh, so nothing would exceed, you know, uh, the cutting area of even like our, like our, my, uh, you know, our, um, 1824 could cut all the parts for this and still make it. Um, I will have everything kind of, you know, ready for tool pathing. I've just got to go through and I've got to make the spacing, right? I got to go through and make the spacing, uh, that 16th of an inch spacing. And, um, and that's going to, that's going to give me the curve uh, for the molding toolpath or the, you know, 3D modeling to rail sweep. And that's an easy cut. Those won't take very long to cut that front. And um, I want to progress in size. I want small drawers, like little shallow drawers, like almost like little router bit drawers, right? Uh, small drawers. Uh, and then I want them to get bigger and bigger and bigger all the way to that four inch drawer. So four three, you know, uh, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half or something. And then one and seven eighths, one and seven eighths, that kind of thing. You know, um, uh, I don't want all the same size. I want smaller to bigger drawers. And cause I don't want just to be a uh, drawers just to throw junk in. I'd like to have some, maybe some organization in there, uh, for router bits. The bottom of the drawers might be, uh, we might, uh, you know, we might uh, cut little grooves or dados or whatever in with a ball nose bit or something uh, for router bits to lay on their side. I, I don't think the drawers will be tall enough for the bits to stand up on end or anything like that. But I'll have all that figured out by our next class. This was just on a whim, right? So I didn't have anything that we you, you're right here with me through the whole process of, you know, where we are up to this point. But uh, this is going to be, um, 
a project that, hey, you might like to make. Um, you can use the you can use the push type pressure openers on the rear of the drawer. So all you have to do is push the front of the drawer to open it. So uh, push in and uh, where it pops out. Yep. Yeah. Then you don't need, then you can have just a smooth front. You don't need uh, drawer pulls on the front. Yeah. What are those called? Um, hold on a second. Amazon. Dot com. Uh, what are those called? Um, shoot. Spring. Jor. Spring. Pusher. Jor spring pusher. Tell me if, uh, John, tell me if, uh, if we're on the right track here. Jor spring pusher. Uh, magnetic latch for cabinet stores. What are they called, John? <laughs> um, let's see here. Cabinet drawer spring. Spring. I'm going to say closer. No. Switches. Switches. Hold on a second. Hold on. John says uh, switches. A drawer switches. <laughs> Cabinet drawer. All right, I'll have to research that. Because, John, I honestly, I'll, I'll have to get with you or something because uh, I don't know what they're called. But, um, yeah. Push to open door switch. Thank you so much. Push to open door switch. Why am I getting, why am I getting uh, light switches? There we go. Okay. All right. I'll research. I'll have all the, uh, I'll have all. Um, Jennifer Brooks says push latch. Is it a push latch? Come on now. Push latch. Hold on a second. Push latch. There we go. Magnetic. Here's a here's one. Right. Right, right, right. Yep. Hold on. That could work. Yeah. Yeah, that can work. Push to open. Magnetic lack. That'll work. That'll work. That'll work. 
Yeah. We could do something like that. And John, I know you're, you're, uh, this one, you know, is just that spring, right? You know, uh, it, you, when you push it in, it pops it right out. So, um, the heavy duty touch latch, right? So we're all, in, we're in the right part now. We're in the right ballpark now. So this will work. So we'll find it out. All right. Thanks ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate that. All right. So, um, We'll, we won't see you this coming Tuesday. We'll see you next Tuesday. And I'll have everything ready, and then this will be a project you all can make. Now, listen, uh, we are coming up on Easter and other holidays and stuff. Would you like me to put together an Easter class, a Easter, some kind of fun project Easter class? Would you like to see that, or is it a holiday that's just kind of losing its... You know, I mean, Easter is the, you know, we've kind of commercialized it. You know, it's the uh, resurrection of, you know, Jesus Christ. But um, we've now turned it into a bunny and egg hopping and all that stuff. But that's not for me to say. So um, I'm, I don't have, you know, kids to do, you know, egg hopping or egg hunting, hunting, hunting eggs. Y'all, is that still a thing? Uh, and, um, but there's some pretty cool Easter projects out there. I'm sure I can come up with something, a nice 3d carving, a nice 3d carving, uh, Easter 3d carving. Yes, please. Okay. All right. So I don't even know when Easter is. Give me a second. Let me look at the dates here. Easter 2024 is March 31st. Yeah. Sunday, March 31st. Okay. Resurrection Sunday, March 31st. So, um, today is the fifth. Let's Let me think. Let's do uh, this coming Tuesday instead of waiting every other Tuesday. Let's do this coming Tuesday. Uh, we'll finish up this, this project. I want to finish this project. I want to have all the files and everything ready. So this coming Tuesday, 7.30. And now uh, classes are going to start at 7.30 instead of 7.15 from now on, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but uh, 7.30 this coming Tuesday, we'll finish up this project. Um, and then that'll be the 12th. And then to give everybody enough time to carve a project because, you know, we don't want it like just a week before, you know, Easter. And then, you know, you don't get to display it very much or something. Let's do a. Can you guys and girls come and hang up with me? Can, hang up, hang out with me or something. Uh, some of you, not all of you uh, on a. Uh, um, a Thursday night, because I know Friday and Saturday you party animals like to go out. But uh, a Thursday evening, the fifteenth, because what we'll do is we'll do we'll finish this project up on Tuesday the twelfth, and we'll do an Easter project, a really nice Easter three D model carving project. And I'll have the files for everybody that doesn't have, you know, the ability to make models. I'll have the files and everything ready. Um, we'll do that. So this week coming, we're not going to skip a week. This week coming, the 12th, we'll finish up this project here, the podium uh, slash computer stand. And then Thursday, the 15th at 730, 
uh, we will do an Easter project for Easter. Okay, I'm sorry. Am I saying the 15th? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thursday the 14th. The 14th. The calendar I was looking at was really small in the picture, Ronnie. Um, so, uh, and then my paid subscribers will still have our Wednesday class on the 13th. But uh, Thursday the 14th, we will do a nice Easter project. Really nice Easter project uh, for everybody and everything. Okay. Okie dokie, okie dokie. All right. So we'll see you on the 12th this coming Tuesday. Uh, my paid subscribers will see you tomorrow night at 7.30, uh, Wednesday night at 7.30. But uh, everyone else will see uh, Tuesday the 12th to finish up this podium slash computer stand. I have everything ready and I'll have the files ready to give to you so you can actually download them and, you know, cut it if you want to make it. And then the 14th Thursday, we will do an Easter project. We'll see you then. All right, everybody. That sounds like a plan for me, plan for you, plan for all of us. And um, I will send out reminders. I'll put a post in the community section of the Spindle TV YouTube channel, the community page. I'll put out posts there. And then for all of you, um, on Facebook that follow me on Facebook and stuff. I'll put out posts there as well, too. We'll do it. All right, everybody. Thanks. Uh, we'll have this project. We'll knock this project out and um, see what we can come up with uh, for. Uh, so we'll see you Tuesday, the 12th. All right. And my paid guys and girls, we'll see you tomorrow night at 730. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Bye now.